This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Eddie Man! Looking fresh! We're back, man. Fit for 40. Here we go. How's that going? What, Fit for 40? Hmm. Um, do you know what? I'm actually on it now. So I've got eight weeks, just under eight weeks till I'm 40. And I've obviously been in America. I didn't go to work there. But since I've been back, which is all the 24 hours, I've been focused. I'm, I, I really believe that I've got a chance now. What, I think, what is the target? I reckon the target, so I'm like, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that I was over 18 stone when I come back from LA. Terrible. And I know I'm six foot five. But obviously, I think the thing is, when you're ripped to shreds, you obviously weigh more than people who aren't ripped to shreds. So I've been talking to people maybe about bringing some of my muscle content now because that is clearly what is weighing um, the most here. So I've, I want to lose, I'm going to lose two pounds a week for eight weeks. So I'm going to lose 16 pounds. So I'm going to try and get under 17 stone. Do you know you've got like eight shows in eight weeks or something? Yeah. You? How about every week you give us an update? Oh. I might give you a little bit of motivation to think, oh, before the next interview I have to... Yeah, well, that sounds amazing. Or should we oh, bring yeah. scales as well? No, so that's that <laughs> yeah. just in case I'm 19. Uh, yeah, I'll give you a little update. I'm, I'm on it though. I'm on it. I'm focused. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. What date is your birthday? June the 8th. This is a, another kick in the nuts because June the 8th is my birthday. And that was my week off. I planned a little weekend for my birthday. It's a Saturday night. And now Gennady Golovkin. Looks like it'll go June eight, and then so I might have to move it. But yeah, why do you have to be there? The show's nothing to do with you, though. Um, so I can pretend it is. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, I'll be doing that. Uh, I'll be doing some fights on the undercard. So and me, me and Gennady, you know, obviously, pretty close. Okay. Um, I have to joke before anyone gets annoyed. Well, we are, yeah. You are mates, aren't you? Mates. I'm not sure we're mates. Acquaintances. I like Gennady. business partners. Are you in business with him? Gennady is. Um, He's a real stand-up quality guy. That's what how I explained Gennady. Not like creeping, but he's a stand-up quality, high quality, classy guy. Okay. You wanted to throw that in there? Actually, one of the fighters who I wouldn't say I was in awe of, but you know, just he's like one of my favourite fighters. So I actually, when I'm in his company, I actually do feel like a slight fanboy. Same with Vladimir. Anyone else? Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, obviously, it's hard to do that when you're mates with fighters and you represent them. So it's more that when you meet people, you don't. Canelo, probably a little bit. Um, are you actually you yeah get get pretty giddy when you interview me how's your weight 16 8 you're quite light though really no, but you've got no I, legs I've, I'm, I did legs today have you what about the bottom half of the legs all legs today yeah okay. I'm doing two leg days I don't really do any weights I just try and run to take the weight off but the key for me is in the eating did you put out our interview the other day from the phone? Yes. Huh. You... It's not ideal the phone interviews, I'm not going to lie. Well, I didn't even want to do it. You just phoned me up and I said, know. can we do something on the phone? Because people like to see you. Mm, well, that's understandable. Even though you don't like you've been to the spa this weekend. Hey. I had a good time in America. It was good. Um, let's start with uh, Anthony Crawler mm. and... Lomachenko, what, mm. can I ask you, what, did, what was you thinking when that whole fiasco happened when the fight hadn't ended but Lomachenko thought it had ended? I thought it was a bad stoppage because I thought Anthony was getting pinged but he knew what he was doing. He was riding the shots and he was moving around but actually it was a great bit of refereeing again from Jack Reese because he felt and the, the ropes were holding him up. He wasn't, he was using the ropes. Um, I actually said to Anthony after the fight, I said, it's a shame he didn't stop it then really looking back. And Joe even said after the third round, um, he was a bit upset, Joe, because he, he, he was questioning 
whether he should have pulled him out at the end of the third round. I actually don't think he should have because he wasn't really hurt. He was outclassed, but he wasn't really hurt. You see, as soon as the ref went on that, he went, no, no, ref, I'm fine. You know, obviously the knockout, no one likes to see that, and it wasn't the ideal ending, but I don't feel that in a fight of that magnitude, pulling him out in the third round. And I've seen, I saw Steve Bunce's uh, piece in The Independent. Did you see it? No. Oh, mate. All these people, they're real experts after the event. You know, oh, it was a callous mismatch, and how did this bout... Why, how was this bout allowed to take place? I mean, one, for all the people who don't understand, he was mandatory challenger, right? So this wasn't a case of top rank phoned up and said, Eddie, would you be interested in putting Crawler in with Lomachenko? Like Fielding and Canelo, that was that, that situation you were talking well, no, about. He was not. defending a world title. Yeah, I mean, but what I'm saying is that situation, they did ring you and say Yeah, to would you, you like to do it? Yeah. yeah. And I'd go to the fighter and say, would you like to do that fight? This is a situation where we actively chased... Lomachenko, as crazy as it might sound, but Crawler said and Joe said, we'd like to try and get the Lomachenko fight. People have got to understand that's the pinnacle of the sport. You know, and when you say, oh, like some people write the story like Crawler's never even won a British title. I mean, he's fought for a world title, he's won it, he's defended it, he's done 24 rounds with Jorge Linares in two unification fights for the Ring Magazine belt. So I think it's very disrespectful to Crawler to say, how can this man be sent into a fight like that? He was a world champion. He's number one in the division. He was mandatory to fight, unlucky for Crawler, pound for pound, probably the best in the sport. So, yeah, he wasn't good enough. That's sport. But it really pisses me off, people, after, oh, well, it was, oh, another lamb to the slaughter. No, he tried to take on the best. Made him seven figures in the process. Securing everything, his legacy, he's done everything in the sport. Boxed for a world title, defended a world title, fought for unifications, boxed Lomachenko in LA. So, you know, and I, I, I really want to reply so many times when people go, how can you accept that fight? It wasn't accepted, it was ordered. So what do you want to do? Turn it down. Okay, well done. You won a final eliminator for Lomachenko. You went for a really tough fight with Jordan over 12 rounds. I've been thinking about it. I'm not, I'm not going to take up the mandatory position. I'm going to go and have another fight in Manchester instead. Do me a favour. You know, people, like I said, people are experts after. And no one was going, no one gave him a chance in the fight, really. But no one was saying, oh, this is just, I mean, how can you do this? I mean, what well, before, all of a sudden he gets knocked out. I mean, it was just, I mean, he shouldn't be there. He shouldn't be there. I mean, it's just Eddie Hearn, once again, throwing his fights in. Yeah, I phoned up Anthony and said, Anthony, hello mate. Yeah, um, you're going to fight Lomachenko. Oh, you don't want to? Tough. I'm telling you now, you're fighting him and there's nothing you can do about it. There is this, we'll call it a misconception, that you send, forget this because it's a mandatory yeah. situation, but in general, you will send or match up fighters with fights that the outside public believe mm -hmm. that the fight has no chance mm -hmm. in winning. Um, <clears throat> so, how to counter that? What well, if you just if a fight's presented to you, yeah. someone rings you and says, "Blah blah," are you obliged to cut it short there without even having the discussion with the no, fighter or the trainer? No. Exactly. So, of course I can't. first thing I have to do is phone the trainer, manager, and fire and say, "Just let you know, if I had a call. This is what you like." There's been loads of fights that trainers and fighters, mainly trainers and managers, have turned down. I mean... Puglioni turned yeah, down. Yeah, against uh, Andre Ward. There's one. I mean, there's, there's been loads. Um, most would always say, okay, how much? You know? This is, that's maybe how our conversation goes. Look, just let you know, we've had X on the phone. Bloody hell. Oh, not really sure we're ready for that fight. Okay, how much are they offering? So and so. Oh no, leave it. Okay. Sorry, he's not interested. How much is he offering? X. Fucking hell. Oh. Why don't you try and push that up a little bit? Okay. He won't take it for this, but if you give him, how much? And then you go back. It's like, it's not exactly rocket science. It's not the toughest job in the world. It's, you're making a deal. But people, you know, certain fights, certain opportunities, you can't turn down. You can't. 
Do you believe that certain fighters uh, who you've kind of represented have just taken a payday as such? No, I don't. As think, opposed don't to think, thinking they can actually win the fight. Uh, no, because I think fighters generally believe they can win. They have a chance of winning. They're competitors. They want to fight the best. Crawler's not deluded. He knew how tough that fight was going to be. And I said in the build-up, Crawler was in unbelievable shape for that fight. He was in such a good frame of mind. He was just totally outclassed. There's no shame in that. That's why it's called sport. So, have fighters taken fights in the past for money? Fucking hell yeah. Of course. Have people done other things in their life for money? Fucking hell yeah. Don't, it doesn't matter what it is. Money makes the world go around. Money will secure them for their life. It's not a job where they're going to be sitting in a reliable, comfy job for 30 years with a pension and walk out the job and have everything paid. It's, you've got to grab it while it's there. You've got to make the right decisions for your career. But every decision is a case-by-case -case scenario. And there's some things you don't see when you're making a decision. You know, a fighter might think, I haven't got it anymore. And I need, to t I need an opportunity now. Or a fighter might think, or a training team or a camp might think, that fighter has no discipline. He's just as likely to walk away from the sport tomorrow. Make the big fight now. But you don't get to hear the ins and outs of everything that happens. So you can't really judge what's right and wrong in a decision. Because sometimes we'll know things that you won't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you know, on this situation, Anthony's not shown any signs of decline. He went out. Ed, could you get me a shot at Lomachenko? This was, this was two years ago, right? Yeah, no problem. Do we have a fight with Ricky Burns? I managed to get my final eliminator. We win it. When we won the final eliminator, we, he won the final eliminator, the changing room was like, yes, we've got Lomachenko. It weren't, oh no, we've got to fight Lomachenko now. It was, whoa, get in. Fighting Lomachenko for the world title, loads of money, big fight, get in. That was the response of the team. You know, so... For me, it was an absolute no-brainer. No-brainer. Is there anything wrong with a fighter? You say kind of fighter's mentality. Taking a fight for money? Yes. No. But it all depends on the stages of their career. Do you understand? Mm. So, let's look at Anthony. He is either going to retire now or have one more fight. His career is and was, whether he took that fight or not, virtually over. So taking a fight like that at that stage is completely different to taking it when you're... I mean, look at... We've got, we've got this situation now with Luke Campbell, right? Luke Campbell is going to fight for the WBC world title. He'll get ordered to fight Mikey Garcia this week and then he'll probably vacate. But Aaron would like to make Lomachenko against Campbell now for the WBC, the vacant WBC world title, right? So what do you do? Do you take that fight... Or do you fight for the vacant belt and then unify against Lomachenko? You get double the money now to fight Lomachenko than you would for the vacant belt. But if you win the vacant belt, you could get four times as much money for the undisputed fight. Ooh, What's he going to do? You, you fight for the vacant... In, in his situation, mm. where he has another 10 fights left in the sport, you fight for the vacant belt. It might, it, uh, he's For someone who fight. hasn't become world champion already Yeah, as well. because you take the gamble that that fight is going to be so big. That fight, if, if Lomachenko beats uh, Komi, that fight is for the undisputed title. And it's a massive fight. That's the IBF. Komi's the IBF. Komi's yeah, the yeah, IBF. Yeah. This is the so WBC. again, everyone's in it. So you don't take a money, you don't take a fight for the money when you're coming through or you're navigating, you know, and managers wouldn't allow that. But when you get to a certain stage in your career, um, your goals change. Sometimes you take a fight for legacy. Still got to be money. But other times you take money, a fight purely for the money. But I don't see how you can criticise any fighter taking a fight for the money. I mean, who are we to say, like, you've got to go in there. I mean, Crawler went in there, Crawler got knocked out. Right? He wasn't, at no point afterwards was he thinking, oh, well, at least I got me money. He was just thinking, I'm gutted because I put everything into this. He's a competitor, he's a fighter. 
But it's our job to make sure I know that when Crawler is done, which could be now, he is absolutely just in such a wonderful position to where he was four or five years ago. I'm so pleased that he has a wonderful life. This is a guy. Uh, but, but, but people will say, yeah, but he could have got hurt. But this is boxing, mate. This is the fight game. Like, nothing's easy. You don't get that kind of money without high risk as a lightweight. So what do you want to do? They know the risks. You know, and of course I want to protect fighters. Of course, I, f I care for these fighters. But ultimately, we all know what we're signing up for. You know? And, and these fighters, when they get opportunities for massive money, it's high risk. Just going back to what you were saying a few minutes ago, I do think there's people out there that believe that not people in the sport, but kind of general public watching the sport. They believe that you you kind of make these know, fight I people know. have these fights. And I make and you all have the money. To have them. No, but a lot, a lot of the thing was, oh, well, you got a massive payday. Oh, what do you mean me? <laughs> Take a fraction of what these guys are earning, and uh, you got paid, didn't you? So you're all right. Slinging him in. It's like what? Fuck you. Like, anyway, it's frustrating, but I know that collectively as a team, we will make the right decisions. You know, that's why now I could do Lomachenko against Campbell at the KC Stadium. It's very tempting, very tempting. He's already said he's coming over, or he would come over. He would do, yeah. yeah. No, he would, he would, because I think that you know Aaron and Top Rank need some. You know, he's not, although he is unbelievable, no wow. doubt, but he's just not a huge draw. So if they can get someone to pay a big chunk of the money for Lomachenko. It's great for top rank. How many in Staples the other day? They announced, I think, nine and a half, ten. I would say there was yeah, eight thousand in there and it sold alright. It was great, it was a good atmosphere. It was, it was alive, you know? And apparently they didn't do well on the tickets at all till the last few days. But again, like a fighter like Lomachenko, I mean, this is the thing I was thinking the other day. If I did do sick tackan at the O2, it would sell out. I think. Good good on the card it would. Yeah. And I think if you did Lomachenko, I mean, certainly if you did Lomachenko against Crawler at Manchester Arena, yeah. it would sell out in a day. It would sell 21,000 like that. And this is sold like 8,000 or 7,000. And that's it. So, um, yeah, but great fighter, Lomachenko. Lovely guy. You know. I mean, he come over to apologise after to everybody. Um, just really good fighter. And Crawler just Crawler said, oh, I mean, Crawler, and such a nice bloke. I mean, you know that. He's like, after he's like, I can't believe I've let the team down. I'm like, Ant, fuck the team. You've gone in there and boxed him. And he's like, oh, he was good. You know, oh, God. But I think sometimes, it's the fascination of fighting the best, competing the best. I mean, I know it's very, very different, but we'd all love a kick around with Pele, wouldn't we? In his prime. <laughs> but we're not getting chinned at the same time. But that's, for these guys... You want to fight the best. You want to test yourself against the best. Unfortunately, the best is very, very good. And on this occasion, the best was a lot better than you. Sport. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, and I hope... Um, yeah, I, I think Ant, Ant's done it all now. You know? I mean, I think he's still got the desire to maybe have one sort of homecoming. I, I think as a fighter, to go out like that, you know, when you look at your box rec record... And it just says, loss, KO. But do you really want to have a nothing fight in Manchester? I don't know. Whatever he does, we'll a million percent support him. And I'm just, um, I'm so pleased he got that opportunity. And, and even with people saying, oh, I'm, I'm so pleased he got that fight. I'm so pleased he had that fight. Because I know what came with it. And that's important. Like I say, they don't have this, Secure job security and this pension and this financial future security. So get it while it's there, mate, especially when you're in that position. You agree? Yep, 100%. Thank 100%. God for that. Right, the first fight on the Joshua Miller undercard announced today. Mm -hmm. What a fight as yeah. well. Kate Taylor, all the marbles. All the marbles. After Clarissa Shields. Uh, yeah. Did it the Great last win weekend. for Clarissa. Shout yeah. out to Clarissa Shields. Big fan. Are you going to get her on any of your shows? Again? She's boxed on our shows. Isn't no, she? I know I she know. did, but um, Kansas. Dimitri, Dimitri Salita's, I had a bit of a mare because um, 
Radio Raheem's fault. So Radio Raheem comes up to me in America and says, Eddie, can I ask you why isn't there any interest in Clarissa Shields against Christina Hammer? I was like, to know. Like I didn't know there wasn't any interest. Like I know it's not massive, but I thought it was relatively yeah, interesting. Yeah, so that fight, yeah, but, yeah. but it's the way he asked the question. Yeah. So I said, I don't know. I said, yeah, it's women's boxing. I said some people are interested, some people aren't. And then he said, do you think Showtime? Like, are they not pushing it hard enough? I said, no, they're, they're doing the all-access shows. They're really good. They were really good. I watched some of them. So why do you think then it's not big? So I went, I don't know. Like, look, Dimitri Sali is my friend. He hasn't got the biggest promotional platform that I'm talking about on social media. So I said, so maybe that's why it's not as big as it should be. Anyway, him and Mark Taffet got the right ump, like tweeting me, going, "Shame on you!" I'm like, I don't know, I was just answering because it, it had. A, I, w- I watched the interview. Yeah, actually. no, I but the interview, interview was fine. Yeah. But the story on Boxing Scene says Hearn says Salita doesn't have a big platform. I'm like, oh god. So I've gone from I'm not going to upset anybody to genuinely not meaning to upset anyone. So probably won't be working with Cruiser Shields again. Um, yeah, but I just said no, maybe because he's got like. I don't know, 1,500 Twitter followers. So I just said, he hasn't got, it's not like the, me as a mouthpiece going, oh, 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 this bike, great. So that's it. And it came out like, Hearn says, uh, Shields doesn't have big promotional platform. I don't know that. I'm like, oh, God. And then Mark Taffet was like, moaning. And, you know. See, the problem is, right, if you've said it in a video, mm. the clickbait is a joke, by the way, going around at the moment. Yes, you are one of the clickbait baiters, but that is a classic example of clickbait, right? Where if you actually listen to the interview, and I bet Taffet and Salita didn't even listen to the interview, where I just said, no, it's a great fight. I said, I love Carissa Shields. I love women's boxing. It's a great fight. Showtime, I've done a good... And he just said, well, why then? Why? And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe because it hasn't got me or top rank screaming and shouting about it. And Dimitri's doing I love Dimitri. And he's now got the arm, and then like, but the clickbait is a joke. The clickbait that I uh, see. Yeah, but our one's all in good jest. Our one's not. Right, your just... one's a shit. What? No, but you're just you're click. You're just clickbait. It ain't clickbait. Well, we'll see what you put up for this one. Well, no, look, Eddie Hearn on blah 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 blah. Mm. But our ones are not. It's to... not you. Umar is a clickbait king. Yeah, but he's been... No, Umar's the clickbait king. The, yeah, but why? What's... Because he does it all the time. No, he's done it... Well, he's done it a couple of times, <laughs> no, but he's every time I Every time I do an interview, I see Umar's thing, and it's, it's clickbait. Yeah, but it's being said in the video. Because people don't always watch the video. They just look at the quote. But you're, you're still saying what the quote is. Yeah, but it's in a completely different context. But I watched... It doesn't say... I like, in, in, in that boxing scene thing, it didn't say, Hearn says this, but says... Uh, Salita's great it's a great fight Showtime have done a great job blah 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 so no, well, you no, did no. say it but when you put it in no, that but context... I watched that interview you did with Raheem actually yeah. and uh, I didn't think nothing of your comment in the video no, but the way it was taken it. for the boxing scene but people it's like my stuff with Bob do you know what I mean but you don't know a dick about boxing apparently is that what he said yeah no he said he gave me a massive back endy compliment he goes what Eddie Hearn does for boxing in the UK is incredible and I'm sitting there going, thanks, mate. But he doesn't know dick about boxing in America. I state that afterwards. I've done an interview with, I think, the ring mech, and they're like, what have you got to say? I went, I think he's right. They're like, what? I went, well, I don't really. Like, compared to him, how can I possibly know? He's been promoting for, what, 50 years? I don't know. Of course, I know You've nothing compared to him. 50 minutes? Yeah, I know nothing. I've been promoting for six months in America. So, yeah. I don't, I, you know, compared to him, compared to him, I know nothing. But I'm nouveau, I'm new wave, and I'm the future. Katie Taylor. Yes. Um, well, we obviously knew this fight was gonna happen. Yeah, it's it was been, a case been of been signing a, contracts on both sides. It's been hard work. Um, she did a press conference yesterday, Pierre soon to. Yeah. So what happened was um, we were going to announce yesterday, and then we weren't quite ready. The zone weren't quite ready. We didn't get the artwork from them till late, and then about an hour, two hours before the press conference, their press conference, I said, "Do you mind doing it tomorrow?" And they went, "We can't." So they had, they signed a press conference yesterday. She's a big star in Belgium, um, and it's on undisputed 
World Championship. I'm so pleased for Katie because this is everything to her. You know, um, WBC, WBA, WBO, IBF, Ring Magazine title on the line as well. It's a very, very tough fight. I think she's 46 and 1 or something like that, Pearson. Um, yeah, this is, this is it. This is everything. You say Taylor's a bigger star than Shields? Not, probably not in America. Worldwide, 100%. Like, sort of. Um, but when you say worldwide, are you saying what, UK and Ireland? Or? I'm saying that her international TV distribution is so much wilder, uh, wider sorry, than Clarissa's. Slip of the tongue now. Yeah. And obviously she's much bigger in Britain and Ireland. She's not as big as star as Clarissa in America. Obviously, she's, you know, she's been boxing there consistently, Clarissa. She's a two-time gold medalist. There's always a lot of comparisons between the two. To be honest with you, I think they're both brilliant fighters. They're both great ambassadors for the sport. Um, and hopefully, Katie can join her as the undisputed champion. Because only one, or two, Cecilia. So it's Cecilia Breakhouse, Clarissa Shields, and Katie Taylor, hopefully, on June 1st. Do you believe that if Casey Taylor is successful during the first, the next fight after that will be Amanda Serrano? Yeah, I mean, we have an agreement in place. Amanda Serrano, Ludabella, promotion of promoters have, have signed a contract to fight Katie Taylor. Uh, so, yeah, so... But I've seen a few comments lately saying, oh, you know, if the deal's right, I'll fight Katie Taylor. It's like, you've signed the deal. So we've got to get that clarified because... The reason I'm giving Serrano the fights is because she signed to fight Katie Taylor. So I want to make sure there's no wriggle move. She's only had one fight on the Yeah, we've yeah. got to give her another fight. Where, where are you looking to fight? Maybe on the Golovkin card. Yeah. And then fighting Katie Taylor. That's what we want. You know, our plan for the year has always been Volante, uh, Pearson and Serrano. That's a big year. Mm. Champion, champion, mega fight. So, um, I'm just so, I'm, I'm really proud. I'm really proud of Katie. And I'm really proud that we get to put this fight on at MSG on a night like that. Because you know there's going to be 20, 21,000 people in MSG, right? There's going to be 14,000 Brits. Sling the Irish in as well, right? atmosphere is going to be unbelievable. Unbelievable. So 14,000 Brits. Mm. It's more like the O2, isn't it? Mm. I mean, already, well, I, think, mean, I think they've sold 16,000 already. So I think, to sell, I think there's about another 3,000 left, which would go. But the majority of them being bought by British people, yeah. I believe, at the moment, there is over 9,000 bought by travelling British fans travelling. Wow. Not Brits who live in New York, that's on top. And there's a lot of them as well. So there'll be over 10,000 Brits travelling, flying, and then there'll be the Brits that are in New York. It's incredible. The atmosphere is going to be unbelievable. If you can make it on June 1, honestly, especially now with Katie in that fight, Callum Smith, others to be added as well, like, try and be there because it will be a night you'll remember for a long time. Can you kind of give us a little rundown of... We know who's potentially going to be on the card, but opponent-wise, is Kel Brook going to be on the card? Good question, and the answer is I'm not sure. Because I think Kel needs the big fight, and this was not going to be a big fight, and I just think to get him up for it, you've got to sling him Who in a big it? fight. What? Who are you considering Kel for? Loads of people. Loads of different... No, no one that you'd be particularly excited about. Um, he's going out to the Amir fight at the weekend, Kel, to watch. I think he could get the Crawford fight. If you look at it, who have top rank got at 147? Well, has that discussion been had? Yeah. Not not in great depth, but I've told top rank, Kel's up for that fight. Obviously, we'd still like to make the Amir Khan fight. If Amir wins, that fight's not happening because he'd have to rematch Crawford anyway. But if he lost, you know, good fight. And I, I believe if Amir loses... And I hope he wins. No, I, I see him doing well in the fight. He's, he's an ultra-skilled fighter. So, Callum Smith, defending his world title. Opponent announced, hopefully, end of this week or early Someone in the top 15. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, and then Josh Kelly, if he gets through Saturday. Joshua Boatze. Also looking at Tommy Coyle against Algeria. Yeah, why isn't... What's Just finalising it. It's small things to finalise now. It's virtually done. Tommy Coyle's already announced 400 times. Uh, he's a bit excited. It's just a really good fight. It's I love a, that it fight. It is a good fight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Are you looking at step-ups again for Boatze and, big, and big Kelly? Step and Kelly big, as yeah, well? Yeah, big step-ups. Kelly's ready. Like, he hasn't boxed Josh since October uh, last year. And he's fighting a tough kid on Saturday. He's 16 and a half, I think he is. I hope he comes through that with no damage and straight into a big fight at MSG. He's ready now. Adam wants to move at pace with him. Um, and Boatze as well. You know, I think massive opportunity for Boatze and, and Josh Kelly to go and fight over there. Is there anyone else that you're going to add to that bill, name-wise, that you haven't already mentioned? Or not? Kate Taylor, Callum Smith, Josh Boatze, Josh Kelly, Cole Algieri, probably one other fight, and then some youngsters. What, well, your American youngsters? Maybe some Brits as well. Maybe one American, one Brit, something like that. Um... <clears throat> You can confirm to us that Dave Allen will definitely headline the show this you, weekend. You've done it. Look at you, your face. You're like proud of yourself, aren't you? You don't, you don't get to see the faces behind the cameras. <laughs> Normally it's cameras. Worked. Stir it up. Ooh, stir it up. Um, yeah, it, it did work. It did work. <laughs> it did because work. Because I have to be honest, I think when I announced the card... I'm not throwing Sky under a bus, I'm just being completely honest. I don't think they had it in their mind. It wasn't like, Dave Allen is not headlining this card. Um, um, but it was more like, who's going to headline? And I said, all along, Dave Allen against Lucas Brown. And they're like, hmm. But Chisora's coming off a pay-per-view, you know, he's hit some big numbers, David Hay, Dave Colwell... We know Gashi's had a full camp. What do you think about that one? I'm like, Dave Allen. And then you did your thing, which I think made him go, oh no. And then, they've just, I think Sky have just listened, to be honest with you. I have to say, the numbers that Dave Allen generates, like you probably see it on oh, your no. videos. I mean, and Sky see it on their digital numbers. For some reason, and I think we all know the reason, People have an affection for Dave Allen. And I think it's because he's vulnerable, he's open, he's raw, he's honest. And I just think on Saturday night, I think it's going to be a really special occasion when he headlines. I really do. And I think, you know, he comes out to that song, doesn't he? It's going to be one of them. Whereas I'll be a bit <laughs> choked up because all I can tell you is when he does it, his body will be full of the most amazing feeling ever when he walks out at the O2. Because you've got to understand, this is a guy headlining the O2 arena live on Sky Sports, live across America on his own. David Allen. You know the guy we slung in years ago because he didn't give a monkeys and he was like, I'll fight anyone. He boxed White and Ortiz. This is a guy who's built back and he's headlining the O2. He's the people's champion. And I know you still get people saying, ah, why are you giving them? People say to me, why do you give Dave Allen all these chances? There's other fighters out there that deserve chances. 100%. I'm lucky for those fighters because I make the decisions and I fucking love Dave Allen. <laughs> you know and I, I'm, just, I'm just being honest with you like, I know he fucks up I know sometimes he's terrible I know sometimes he's a lazy bastard but I like him and I think he's got a great heart and I think he's really got his nut down in this camp he's worked very very hard people go oh well, well just because he worked hard for one camp yeah you got a point but I just 
you know, and that's not, again, when you look at social media, oh, you only love Alan because you make a load of money out of him. What, Dave Allen? Do me a favour. You know, I've never made a bean out of Dave Allen. But I want to make a bean out of Dave Allen. I want to see Dave Allen win. That's what I want. I mean, forget the houses that he's managed to buy and forget the great feeling in his body when he walks out. I want him to win. That's what would make me feel great. And I know that if he wins, everyone watching and everyone in the arena will feel great. And when he does his speech after, he will make people cry. And he may cry. And I may cry. But he may not win. In fact, I think he's the underdog in the fight. And he's the favourite with the bookies. But I think people just put money on him. But let's break down who has he beaten? Nick Webb is his best win, who Camille Sokolowski just knocked out as well, right? So, it was a handful. But, who is Dave Allen's best win? So Lucas Brown went to Russia and knocked out Chago for the WBA regular world title, right? He's had some decent wins along the way, knocked out Richard Towers, a couple of other decent wins. I'm not saying his resume is unbelievable, but he also went what did he end up going? Eight rounds with Dillian White? So, like, and he was in bad shape. Dillian beat the granny out of him. And he's in good shape this time, man. He looks a lot lighter. So does Dave. But the fascination with this fight is I have absolutely no idea what is going to happen. It might be the worst fight ever in the history of the heavyweight division. I'm just putting it out there. So if it is, don't fucking blame me. Or it might be one of the best fights you've ever seen. It might be one of the most dramatic. They might be slobbering over each other after two rounds. Wrestling and sweating and, you know, I don't know. But I have no idea. But isn't that half of the attraction? What is the worst heavyweight fight you've seen in the last five years? Luis Ortiz against Malik Scott on my Monaco show. My first fight with Luis Ortiz. Signed him. Sold the rights to HBO. Flew Peter Nelson over. He was sitting there. I remember it as fucking clear as day. And oh my God. I'm turning around to Peter after like the fourth or fifth round. Just going. I'm sorry. And it was, it was, it was so bad. So bad. That was the worst heavyweight fight I've ever seen. <clears throat> um, the worst fight I've ever seen live was Johnny Nelson against Carlos De Leon for the WBC Cruiserweight World title at Sheffield Town Hall. Were you there in Sheffield? I was there. I was about 13. Was I 13? It was my mum and dad's wedding anniversary and he took it and they still talk about it to this day. To this day. Um, and Johnny, he could have won so easy that night. And no one did anything. Your dad took your mum on her, their wedding anniversary yeah. to watch Johnny I think it was Nelson. a wedding anniversary. So no, just it. roll that story, it's better. Carlos de Leon. Wow, Johnny had so many fights. Here we go. 1990. I was 11. No, 27th of January. Birthday. It's my mum's birthday. Well, you, that's even worse. Yeah. Draw. 1990. Wow, it's 11. But, possibly... My favourite night, my favourite away day trip. So the worst fight I've ever seen, coupled with my favourite away day fight, was both involving Johnny Nelson. Because Johnny Nelson redeemed himself against Marcus Bott in Germany for the European title. And that was 12 months, 11 months later, in December the 14th, 1990. Wow, I can't believe I was only 11. I was going mental running around there. It was ferocious that night. And actually, I remember having a few beers actually that night with my dad. I was 11. And we walked back to the hotel, I remember. And my dad famously says this story because he says it all the time. We were both walking back to the hotel. And we walked past, as you can imagine in Germany, a dodgy gaff. You know what I mean? Brass house. Yeah. yeah. And I said to my old man, 
Baza, if you want to go in, I won't tell mum. <laughs> True story. And he was like, oh, you're right, son, I went back to the hotel. True story, that was, one, that was one of the great trips, that was, great trips. 11 years old, absolutely fit, literally running around, going up to the German fans, going, yeah, I was like Billy Joe Saunders' his son. I was like, yes! Get in, had to like, but it was it was great. That was a great night, great night. Um, Dave Allen asked me to ask you. All right, was on a bonus. Yeah, is there a knockout bonus for Dave Allen? I've got to be honest. Like I'm doing quite a few quid on the show, so not really. What about if he knocks him out between round one and three? He could bring it up at the press conference. We could talk about it there. It's a weird setup with those two, isn't it? Because they really like each other. I know. But they're both saying, I'm going to punch yeah. the granny out of you. No, I'm going to punch the granny out of you. But I really like you. I just hope Dave lets his hands go. Because if you watch him with Darren, shout out to Darren Barker. Put a lot of time in as well with Dave. Great. Great partnership, but the first fight they've ever had together. Fuck knows, again, excuse my language, God knows what's going to happen. But I just hope Dave lets his hands go. Because when he lets his hands go, he can punch and he's strong and he can fight. He's got to be careful. <coughs> I, don't, I don't like reading all this, there is no way Lucas Brown could knock me out. Lucas Brown hits very hard. So one thing he's got is big power. So I don't. Dave's got to be clever as well. He's not fighting a, a bum, you know. He's not fighting um, any mid run like you know when he boxed that Bracamonte. I mean that was supposed to be an easy night's work. It was an absolute war. You can't just stand there, and not move your head, and just get hit by Lucas Brown. So uh, I can't wait. Are they both in their contracts that if they win that they go on to fight Bryce? Brown is. Brown is yeah. not not Allen. No, the plan for Brown is what he wanted was Dave Allen and then Dave Price. And to be honest with you, I think the winner, whoever wins, should fight David Price next. And we'll do that on in July on Dillian's, Dillian's card. So you're not doing a Cash Alley rematch? No, but I was, I was thinking about... I think I did an interview with you and I said, he'll get another fight, Cash Alley, because he's a big name. And I started thinking, I'm being really honest now, right? Should we be giving him another fight? That's what I started asking myself. Because I got a bit of stick from saying that. And I was just I was just trying to be brutally honest, saying, look, Cash Alley, when he fights again, everyone everyone knows who Cash Alley is. Not everyone in the country, but you know what I mean? Like Yeah. So for me, people are going to tune in to watch him. As bad as that sounds. But we're not really setting the right example by giving him another opportunity. But is there the argument that you do the crime, you serve your time, you're good? Do you know what I mean? Is I he mean, not having his money withheld? But yeah, but look, once the board have dealt with him, what I'm saying is, should we be giving him another fight? That's what I started to think about. Because I said in an interview, and I wasn't saying, oh, I'm going to give him another fight as soon as he's back. But I said to you, you I think you said to me, what's next for Cash Daddy? For me, I said, well, after his thing, I said, he'll probably get another fight because he's got name value Look, for the wrong reasons. He made, he, he apologised straight, straight away after the thing. How long do you hold that against someone for? He did it. You move on from it, surely at some point, or, or but it's also. But, but at what because... point does someone do something where you say, "No more, no," and that's the argument with peds and stuff like that. And I've always said, if you have a hundred percent, can't compare that to peds. No, but I'm just saying in general. What I'm saying is, if you've a hundred percent taken performance enhancing drugs and you know about it, to to enhance your performance in a fight, then that is you know, done, in my opinion. You've always got, did he eat some dodgy meat? Did someone put him in? I mean, we just, we don't know. Some we choose to believe. Some, But what I'm saying is, at what point do you say, 
no, he can't be given another opportunity. So when I talk about Cash Alley, I actually think that once he's served his punishment and paid his fine, should he be allowed to resume his career? Yes. Yeah. I do. And, and I think that in that case, because, you know, Cash ain't a bad fighter. He's a... And a He's a decent fellow, actually. I'm, I don't really know him, but when I've met him, anyone, he seems like... Yeah, I know. Who so, knows him, he's a decent But fella. he could be in some, like, decent-sized fights. So, I don't know what's going to happen. I actually don't know what's happening with the board, to be honest. We, we just had to let him know how much his purse was, and I think send it to the board. You could so. do Cash Alley and Tom Little. So, why isn't Zhang fighting? What happened? So, Zhang got injured. Right. Yeah, so... Uh, Zhang was supposed to fight Tom Little, never announced, but yeah. only about conversation. And we were waiting on his visa, and his visa came, like, beginning of last week. And then his last spa on, I think, Thursday or Friday, he tweaked his elbow. Nothing major, but just couldn't fight. I couldn't believe it, because, you know, the conversation with Tom Little. Tom, I, was, I was with Tom, talking about his fight for, like, two months. Will he get his visa? Good news, he's got his visa, it's on. And that's to tell him two days later it wasn't on. But um, Are you going to stick him somewhere else, Tom? I'm probably going to make that fight again. But Tom, uh, Tom's always got fights in him. I'd actually quite like to get Tom a win. Tom Little's a decent heavyweight. He's just, he ends up having to fight tough fights time and time again. Um, here's a question. Mm -hmm. Do you believe <laughs> in ghosts? Do, no. Do, do you, you believe in ghosts? Yes. Really? Yes. Do you believe in ghosts? No. What? Why are you asking? Just that? wondered. Have you been visited by someone in the no. night? No. I don't believe in ghosts. Why? Just don't. Do you believe in the afterlife? Let's not go there. You must do if you believe in ghosts. <clears throat> We all go somewhere, don't we? <laughs> yeah, but what? Yeah, you know, do you? Do you go somewhere? I just think everyone's here. Everyone like around you that's ever died. Everyone around me that's ever died. Are here now? You think so? Yeah. Do you really think that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Edward, yes. do you believe <laughs> this is the actual question? Smurfs. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, that was a bit random. Do you believe that Dave Allen will ever fight for a world title? <laughs> Do you know what, we were, we were talking, because I watched the video and he said, <laughs> I'm three fights away from AJ, right? And I... He I, first said a world title shot, then he yeah, said Yeah, I think they said, I think it was Michelle Phelps. Mine. Hey, oh, all right, mate, calm down. And he said, yeah, I'm three fights away from AJ, Wilder, blah, blah, blah. And I, like, I didn't laugh, but... Then I thought, well, it obviously depends who those three fights are. So let's look at it like this. If Dave Allen beats Big Daddy Brown on Saturday night, and then we put him in with, I don't know, say, say, say Price, but say Chisora or someone like that, right? And he knocked them out. And then I put him in with, I don't know, Parker or Povetkin. And he knocked them out. Would you say he deserves a, a world title shot? Fucking hell yeah. If he, <laughs> you would. If, he'd give him one if he beats Big Daddy Brown. If he knocks out Lucas Brown, she's all right, Parker. 100%. I'd yeah, give him the so, world so, title. So, okay. Official news. Dave Allen is three fights away from a world title. What you don't a Pavet? Come on! If you knocked all I'd, them I'd people, a, I'd actually really like to see Alan Pavetkin. Okay. I know. It's, I know it ain't the easiest fight for Dave, but I think it's a war. What's happening with Pavetkin? He's gonna fight in July. On July thirteenth. Maybe. <laughs> um, all right. So Dave Allen officially is three fights away from Dave the Allen, fight. and then. When he wins... I never said Joshua or Wilder. I just said, would he ever fight for a world title? Couldn't you get him in with Char? Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, mm. maybe. I, I just think that, um, sorry, if he wins on Saturday, we can stand up and go, he's now two fights away from challenging for a world title. Can you imagine if Dave Allen got yeah. a world title? Yeah, put him, then put him in with Sammy and Evo, the rematch with Bracamonte. Are they the defences? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're the next two fights. No, when he wins a world title, they're his first defences. Imagine he does. I'd love him to fight. I think... I want him to I fight think, for a British title. I think Chisora has a tough fight on Saturday night. Yeah. Potential oh, banana skin? <clears throat> yeah, because we saw Gashi against Takam. He had five days notice. He was blowing out of his ass, but you see him have a go for it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so he's going to have a right go. He's had an eight-week camp. He's going to have a right go at Chisora. And Chisora, for everything that he's learned with Dave Caldwell, he can't help but have a tear-up. The only thing is, I think he'll be all right, Derek, because in the O2, he's got to be up for it. Because when he boxed the European title, he just weren't up for it. But when Chisora's up for it, he's very hard to beat. So Dave, Coldwell and Hay and Derek have just got to make sure they're up for this on Saturday night. Because it's going to be a war against Gashi. Gashi's right up for it. He's been, I've seen his social media. He's trained very hard for this fight. So don't miss that because I expect it to be a war. Um, that's the chief support, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, Thanks to you. Josh Kelly mm -hmm. and Conor Ben, could it happen in the next 12 months? Well, Conor Ben is the one calling it out. I mean, non-stop. But he's not really calling it out, is he? He is. He's uh, idiots like me asking questions No, I think he's it. calling it out. I mean, it. Conor is work in progress, as we know. He's improving all the time. He's had a massive layoff with a hand injury. So, he's a very, very exciting young fighter. He's a very talented young fighter. But, you know, Josh has had... 140 amateur fights all around the world. Um, one day, I think that's a really big domestic fight. But I'd rather Connor learn. And he's been out for a while as yeah, well. Yeah, no, he needs yeah. his fight Saturday. And listen, the guy he's fighting Saturday, he's had you know, some good fights before here in Scotland, Jordan Easton. And he's, he likes to tear up as well. So I expect Connor to be in a tear up. They're both fighting on the card on Saturday, Conor Ben and Josh Kelly. Cordina's is in a tough fight for the British title against Andy Townend because uh, Joe ain't boxed since August. He's come back from hand injury as well. That's going to be a very tough fight. Shannon Courtney, Nikita Rabarbi. Yeah. When Chocolate. is he in? Already? He's landed yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sam Hyde. Um, Sam Cox. And... That's it. John Harding Jr. John Harding Jr., sorry, yeah. One of Dillian White's. Dillian White is the new Al Heyman in Britain. He's signing up fighters left, right, and, and centre. And his brother's signing up the other ones. I know. So, yeah, he rates John Harding Jr. highly. So, looking forward to seeing him on Saturday. What is. So, you've got from after this week. You're in so, we've got April 20 at the O2. April 26, LA. It's a fucking stonking card. Rung Visaya Estrada, the Henny Roman unification, Jesse Vargas against Humberto Soto, Quig against Velez, Sims Jr., Giasov, uh, Amo Williams debut, Pacheco, massive card in LA, 26th. Same night, we're in Florence as well, Fabio Turchi at the Zone Italy, Matchroom Box in Italy card. May 4th, Canelo Jacobs. Oh. The Mew Ryder. The Mew Ryder. That, yeah, Alexis has been there. Our other fighter on the card. Tough well. fight for Ryder. Really tough fight. Yeah. Great fight. Yeah. Great fight. John was in today. I'm so pleased for him because he really deserved like the comeback after he lost to um oh, not Rocky. Jack Armfield. Jack Armfield. And then lost to Rocky. I thought John was virtually done. He deserved so much credit for coming back. Big win over Patrick Nielsen, uh, big win over... Um, Cox. Cox, yeah, big win over Cox. And big win over the Russian, um, Sorokin, at the Copper Box. So he's, he's on a great run. This fight, although John is the mandatory for Callum Smith, it's not due yet. So this fight will carry that forward. So if Lemieux wins, he'll be the mandatory for Callum Smith. And same for John Ryder. What's happened to Cox, just so... He was supposed to box in Italy... Uh, 
on our last card and he got ill. So he's looking to come back very soon. Carry on with your run of shows. Yeah, so that's May 4th. May 10, next gen in Nottingham. Lee Wood, Jordan Gill, Felix Cash, Charles Franken debut, Ray Ford from the States, um, plus more. And nothing the week after. It's going to be Usyk. Week after that is Takan against Usyk. Week after that is AJ. Ooh. Ooh. So, and the week after that is probably Golovkin. And the week after that is going to be my birthday. And then we're just playing in July now. We're with Dillian and stuff like that. What is... I don't know, it seems to be asking me every week. So we're waiting. We're still waiting for the WBC's decision, which is frustrating, but we have to let them do their thing. Dillian is boxing in July, 100% in London, and... We will wait on the WBC's decision and we will look to announce... So that, that ruling will affect the opponent? Uh, or not necessarily? No, probably not now. Probably not now. Are we going to be happy with the opponent? I believe so, yeah. I think it's a great fight. Who? 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 Well... I can't say it. Do it one more time. No. No? <laughs> no? Who the fuck is it? No, I'll tell you, you, you'll find out. You'll find out very soon. Good fight. But you're saying that we'll be happy, yeah? Yes. What about the, the critics? The people that... There'll always be critics. I mean, I'm not saying everyone's going to go... Fucking hell, Hearn, you are the absolute Mac Daddy. But I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it's a it's a very good heavyweight fight. Okay, will Lawrence Okoli and Lebedev be on that card? Quite possibly. I'm trying. He sent you a little tweet today to say, yeah. what was it? Uh, deliver. Deliver. Like, right. Is he telling you to deliver yeah. or saying you have yeah. delivered? No, deliver. Okay. I'm trying to deliver. Who else are you looking to put on that card? Possible Charlie Edwards unification. Okay. Uh, Alan against Alan Brown winner against Price maybe Chisora Parker like big cards clear your saddies baby um, when when do you want to announce this by as soon as they've kind of done their yeah, ruling to announce it this week realistically it'll probably be next week end of next week something. so <coughs> Frank Smith has gone to New York mm -hmm for the Khan Crawford fight and I think he was at the airport today with Chundi yeah he was yeah he texted me yeah what do you know anything about their conversations or no they had a meeting uh, and they were both flying out so they held the meeting at the airport <laughs> what shut up what why would they have apologies um, you're going to represent Tundi yeah I just don't know whether Tundi's on a wind up I think he's got to be on a wind up uh, but Frank bumped into him at the airport today. He's flying out, I think, said some shoot or something with, that with Anthony. Um, what? Well, I mean, he's very confident. I just don't know whether he's on a wind-up. I don't think he is. No? No. Listen, at the end of the day, I like people who speak with passion who speak with belief. There is the line between passion, belief, and delusion, right? And I've only seen him cross that a couple of times. But then again, he's a boxing guy, right? So you can't discount his opinion completely. Like, if you're willing to sit on social media and credit others' opinions who may follow you, you can't just discredit Tunde's opinion. But sometimes you get so close to something, you have so much passion for something, that nothing, like, no, no, you don't, no. You, no. Andre Ward, no, mate, he's not on, so he hasn't got anywhere near the skill set of Anthony Yard. That's when you hit the mark and you go, 
Whoa, you know that that meme. If, if, if Tundi can explain why he believes that that's the case, then surely not. I'm not saying you have to agree with it or disagree with no, it. But you, if you can explain why, that's what I'm saying. You have to. You can't just discredit his opinion and say, mate. But unfortunately, I think when you become so passionate about something and so close to something, it's a bit like when you love someone so much. They can't do no wrong, can they? In your eyes, you know what I mean. No, but you understand what I mean? Like, you'd always... No, I wouldn't do that. No. No. That not my so-and-so. You know? No, so, but you, like, can, you, really but like you cannot fighter, it? say yeah. that Andre Ward's skill set is nowhere near the skill set of Anthony Yard. I mean, Andre Ward... Probably the most skillful yes, boxer of our yes, generation. Yes. Over the last... And probably the toughest to beat. Yeah. I mean, up there with Mayweather. And... Um, and Anthony Yard has beaten Tony Avalon and Travis Reese, Reeves, or whatever his name is. I mean, it's mental. But he is now in a position where he's getting a lot of money to go to Russia to fight Kovalev. Do you believe the fight happens in Russia? Your it's opinion? A lot, it's a lot of money. I mean, but again, it's the same conversation we talked about earlier. Like, is the right thing for Anthony Yard to go to Russia and fight Kovalev? No, don't be ridiculous. I mean, like... I agree with that. Yeah, of course not. But, one, it is a lot of money. And two, if Anthony Yard... See, this is what it comes down to, right? If Tunde believes what he's saying, they have to take the fight. Because he'll beat Kovalev easy. Because what he's saying is, the anti yard skill set is on another level to Andre Ward, right? Where Kovalev is now, compared to when he boxed Andre Ward, it's not even comparable, right? So, therefore, if anti yard is what Tunde says he is, he will go to Russia and he will beat Kovalev. Do I think that? Absolutely not in a million years. Because, and I don't, it's not that I don't rate anti yard, I just don't believe they will go to Russia and get the win. I say, will they go? They might go, but I'm saying, will they beat Kovalev in Russia? No, I, I don't believe they will. But, I don't know. He might be... Yeah, but he's saying that, it's a, that he will not Kovalev out. Then he wins. He might... Do, I mean, I don't, I don't believe that he beats Kovalev in Russia. That's all. But again, I don't know the kid. I'm only telling you, from what I've seen, right, and from his pedigree and his background like his amateur but I don't believe that he will but I, I'm not as close to him as Tunde Tunde should know more than me but it's just whether he's gone over the affection pushing towards the delusion levels where you sort of lose your mind a little bit in terms of a balanced opinion on this kid so but it, listen he's got everyone talking I mean, I've never seen so many fighters slag off a trainer. Like, that's quite unusual. Like, people yesterday, I think a few world champions called for him to be sectioned. You know, on Twitter. I mean, you shouldn't laugh about things like that, but that people are saying, this guy has lost lost the plot. I quite enjoy it. I think he's on a wind-up. He's got, he said, yards the A-side and they should do it at Arsenal. That's got to be the first wind-up. The second wind-up is... <clears throat> um, that his, his skill set's on another level to Andre Ward. I think it said that Andre Ward hasn't got the skill set of. Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, that's, I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, so. But what you might be saying by the. <laughs> I don't know, I do. But look, I will say this he's got one fighter, hasn't he? And that's Anthony he's got, Yard. He's got a couple of other Yard. Is he? Okay. Ones, yeah. But he's got one fighter. <coughs> Good luck to him. He's out there hustling. Like I say, he's been offered a lot of money. You know, and it's a money where it's very difficult to turn out. Whether you believe you win or not, sometimes there becomes an amount of money where it's like. But when you're at his stage of his career, it's a big, big, um, big risk, but has big reward. I hope he fights him. I hope he beats him. So, yeah, that's my view on Sunday. Um, 
quite enjoy quite enjoy his interviews because it's one of them you watch and you just go you know he's like a he's he's like Eubank Senior a lot of people have been talking about the comparison you know where again you just you're so close to it you have so much affection for something that it ends up sort of overtaking your balanced opinion so again, anyone with passion, I support. So, good luck. Um, I had a couple more little bits just to... Do you write these things down? No. You do? I don't. It's quite impressive. Like, I just thought you were just a blagger. I am a blagger. Um, what was it like to ask you? What do you think Mayweather's announcement's going to be, Edward, if you're taking a wild guess? That he's starting up his own gyms. Do you know that? You sounded like you knew that. No, that is what I think. What, Mayweather gyms? Like a, a franchise? Yeah. Okay. That's a random thing to guess if you don't already know. No, that. because I'm, I'm involved. Haters will say I'm not, but no, I'm not really. No, I just heard someone tweet about it last night. I think he's announcing his new range of gyms or something. Okay. Is it tomorrow? Wednesday, yeah. Um, Joshua Boazzi was with Anthony Yard at the Drake concert the other day. Have you spoke mm. to Boazzi about what they spoke about? Or? Um, no. 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 Oh. Great fight. Wonder. Um, Who do you think wins that fight? You're a funny fucker, you You just, you'd never say, would you? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, do you really? Yeah. It's not like you, not to go against your man. Uh, uh, um, as it stands at the moment, Edward, mm. Joshua, mm -hmm. if he gets past Gerald Miller, his second fight of 2019, you said before that that will more than likely be in America. No. I mm. said if he fights Wilder, it will probably be in America. If it's not Wilder, mm -hmm. which none of us are expecting it to be, mm -hmm. by the way. Good. No, no pressure. No, I like it that way. What? I like it that way. No, because it's like we're losing No, because if I, if I got it maimed, it'd be a big, big ting. What's that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you would have seen what he's just done there, it's oh. enough to put you off your dinner. All right. You? If it's not him, mm. he'll fight in the UK? I believe so, yeah. I mean, if it's not him, I think really you have two options. You may have to fight your mandatory, which is Alexander Usyk, and the other one is Dillian White. Still remains a big fight. What, that remains an option for this year? I think so. I think that fight's a big fight. I mean, tell me the big fights out there for AJ. Dillian White, um, obviously the undisputed fight, Deontay Wilder, Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury, Ortiz. Chuck Ortiz yeah. in there. Um, Allen, obviously. Dave Allen when he's had his three wins. Um, well, hopefully, by then, Dave would have had his three wins. So we could just make that fight. Well, right, Bazza. Sorry, Sam. Don't, don't let him in. No, don't let him no, in. I'm not talking to you because you're getting me into trouble. What? Well, because you get all the... You wind him up. Of gossip yeah, out of I know. And then, that, and then he, he phones me out and gives me a bottle. I said, what are you doing? You know I, what I, do you know about. what? I'll tell you the truth. Whenever yeah. I look to interview Barry now, I wait till you're not around. Really? Just in case you yeah, go, what, what, you what, you go what are you talking about? Stay out of it. He's like, no, what? 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 what, what. So. You know. uh, Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. So. The yeah, so the, and Pulev is a mandatory, which won't be till after the WBO mandatory. With but the still, IBF, yeah. Yeah, but still, it's going to, you know. What's his situation? Are they. I think it's going to court, isn't it, or something? I don't know, you might know more than me. No, I don't. Just It's not the best. I, I, I'd like to confirm that you've never tried to do anything like that to me in all no, that funny, years. No, funny, yeah? No. 
I said that to Dylan White the other day. He went, yeah, do you know how that ends? Coogan dies in an interview with Dylan White. <laughs> Um, yeah, so look, that, I, I say it a million times. The only fight, listen, I messaged AJ this morning with the Katie Taylor poster. This is before the announcement, yeah. so made. He loves Katie Taylor, she thinks she's great. So he goes, unbelievable. And I'm sitting here like with the eyes, like rolling the eyes, like as if to say, She's got her undisputed fight. Where's mine? Oh. So, I replied, it is slightly different making the undisputed heavyweight world title compared to the undisputed women's lightweight world title. Do you think if you went on holiday for like six months, the fight will get made? No. Because it's got to go through me as well. But I think that, I do think that after this fight, I think Josh should probably just have a meet with Wilder. Should or will? Yeah, should. Just... I think they should just have a call and go, look, tell me if we're wasting our time. Like, I don't know, do you want to do this? And then it might be the best way to get it done. I don't know. Just chucking it out there. Yeah, but they're both, at the moment, they shouldn't overlook their next fights. Joshua, in my opinion, has a tougher fight than Wilder does. But Brazil, you know, he can fight. So, I quite like that fight, actually. What, Wilder Brazil? Yeah. Live on Sky Sports. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, what Are you involved in that fight? Which fight? Wild Brazil. Don't be silly. No, just from... Yeah, no. Sky bought the fight. Fantastic. Look at those three weeks on Sky. Wilder Brazil. Usyk against Takam. Joshua against Meta. A heavyweight wankoff. Mate, what is wrong with you? You know what I mean. Well, I know what you mean, but it's not... You know, there's a way to say it. Heavyweight wankoff. It is, isn't it? Oh, wait, wait. What's that? Wait, what week are you doing? one, Usek, wait. Week Mate. two, Joshua, wait. No, wrong way around. Oh, right. Wilder, then Joshua. Yeah. Um, the initiative, you. Oh, all right. So, yeah, um, I just think they've both got to focus on those fights, get the win, and then we go again. This Miller fight, <coughs> I don't know why people think that Joshua's going to like Steve Mullen. I think it's a really, man. really tough fight. I mean, Miller's game as fuck. Is. Do you know who is? You know his manager. I mean, he's promote. Uh, you know Greg Cohen. Yes. You know the lady who works for Greg Cohen. Yes. Sarah. Have you seen her comments? No. She was at the press conference, wasn't she? Yeah. Go on. On social media. No. <coughs> Tell us. I don't want to say it, but like, it's going to be spicy. Let me show you. Let me show you one post. How good is Michael Hunter? Yeah, I'm really excited about Michael Hunter. I think he's going to be very tough to beat. Little heavyweight dark horse. He's had two big wins, hasn't he? But beat Martin Bacoli. Mm. And then beat um, Ustinov. So he's in a great position. Yeah, let me show you that. And he's going to fight on your Makes Maryland good, card, yeah. Usyk. Oh. Huh. And then there's loads more. Like I, I didn't, I didn't screenshot the others, but like where she's going in on fans and stuff like that. She's bright. Oh, proper. I bet he liked it. No, I didn't like it. No, I just did it by mistake. <laughs> no, you can't because that's a screenshot, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Um, that's, yeah, that's a bit. That's, I know, a bit yeah. naughty, isn't it? So they're up for it, and that's that's their mindset going into this fight. Um. Andrade, Ed. Yo. When are you announcing Andre? <clears throat> um, soon. We're just gearing everything up. Golovkin undercard, our end of June show. Andrade, we're looking at June 22 or 29. So I want to do another UK show as well. One of those weeks. Oh, you're giving us one, yeah? Yeah, I thought I'd give you one. So, well done. And we want another UK show in July outside of the Dillian White fight. So you're going to have two in one July? One in June, one in July, plus the pay-per-view. She's Dillian. Okay. It's 
Man, you haven't had a pay-per-view in, in the UK yet. I've only given you two pay-per-views in the first seven months. Eight months, because we won't have one in August either. So what do you say? Thank you. No. If you could make a pay-per-view, you'd fucking do it. No, I could have, because I could have made pay-per-views. I could have done Eubank de Gale, and I could have done Carl Crawford. So, what have you got to say now, big tits? You know what I mean. No. The pay-per-view fights that you could have made by now, you failed to deliver. No, because I just gave you two that I could have put on pay-per-view. You also could have done Joshua April 13th. UK pay per view, and you could have also have done Brooke Khan. I tried, me nuts off to do that. Man. Still hopeful, little tingle. We'll see, we'll see what happens on Saturday. Good luck to him in. He's trained very hard. I spoke to him today, he spoke, he's trained very, very hard for this camp. It's a very tough fight. You know, it's, I'm not saying it's like Lomachenko Crawler, but it's like he, Lomachenko is a Crawford, he's up there with Lomachenko mm. in terms of. Who do you think is actually the best fighter in the world? So my top five pound for pound is, and this is in no particular order at the moment. Can you just list number one? No, because we'll come back to that. Canelo, mm -hmm. Lomachenko, mm -hmm. Usyk, mm -hmm. <coughs> Crawford. I know that people just think I'm just saying it, but I believe AJ is pound for pound top five as well. And I know that he might have to have another big win, but I, I believe he is. Um, Crawford spent, got like Crawford Spence, Mikey Garcia, but probably not now. Golovkin? Mm. My number one pound for pound fighter is so close between Canelo, Lomachenko and Usyk. But when Danny Jacobs beats Canelo on May 4th, is he the number one pound for pound fighter in the world? Well, if he does beat him. You know it's going to happen, don't you? Said that very confidently. I really, I really believe this is going to happen. Which heavyweight? Come on, Danny Jacobs. Come on. Come on, the miracle man. So, May the 4th, live on Sky Sports in the Zone. Correct. I do really like the Zone's promotional avenues. What, that new advert? That's blowing up paper. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, but in general, the Zone's kind of marketing and advertising. I was going to let them know, they'd be really pleased. That, that that's I'll give him a quote if you want. Yeah, yeah. Let me do that. Yeah. Ring, oh, let me just. Ring, uh, skipper, oh, you got skipper on. Yeah, ring him up. I'll call Joe Markowski. <laughs> Joe, it's Eddie. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Listen, unbelievable news. Unbelievable news. No, we haven't made Joshua Wilder, mate. This is bigger. Um, listen, <laughs> have you got anyone in the room with you right now? I'm not on loudspeaker, am I? Good, right? Again, between you and me. Listen, I had, a, I had an interview with Coogan Cassis earlier. Yeah, you know that guy, yeah. Mate, he has told me, and again, please, I, this has to be so confidential. He really likes your advertising, mate, and your marketing. I'm not joking, mate, no. <laughs> No, seriously, he just said like he really likes it, and like, he's actually willing to provide a quote as well to talk about how much he likes it. Oh no, mate! If you could let the board know, I mean, this is just massive. Great, yeah, great news, mate. Great news. Okay, cheers, boy. He couldn't believe it. Do you know all I've learned from that? What? I question when I actually see you on the phone now whether you're actually yeah. speaking to anyone. Um, do you know how much publicity that's going to get now? Everyone's going to be like, oh, let me go and check out their advertising as a result of what I've just said. Do you get what I've just done? Do you get that? Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. Oh, you played him a fucking compliment. All right, Gozer. Come yeah, on. You could learn a thing from two. You'll match them a lot. On what? From your advertising. From What's design? wrong with advertising? From design. What's wrong with it? Ah, um, you don't like that, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Well, You're not going to ring them up and tell them that, are you? All right, son. Right, here's a question for you. 
Which heavyweight, okay, bearing in mind that Joshua, Wilder, Fury, all undefeated fighters, which one out of the three has the best two opponents on their record? Think about it. Well, you know, you know why you're saying that, because you want me to say Tyson Fury. No, I'm asking you a question, so Tyson you Fury. don't have to say it. Tyson, Tyson Fury, Fury, yeah? Because he's for Wilder and Klitschko. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who has the best resume? Overall? Yeah. Oh, that's just, yeah, Anthony Joshua. Correct. Overall? Yeah. But just opponents faced. Who has the best two wins on their record? Anthony Joshua. Who's the second win? Who's well, I would, choose, I would choose from Povetkin and Parker. Okay, so after Tyson Fury... Oh, I would say AJ's... Oh, actually, I would say Dillian White is up there as one, as one of AJ's best wins, to be honest. So I, I would say... I would say... When you say, let's look at the top four wins of every heavyweight. Well, we do two if you want. So if you want to do two, with AJ, I'll go for... I'll go for Klitschko and Povetkin. That's what I'll go for. For Fury, I'll go for... See, this is where it gets really tough for Fury. The third win. Sorry, the second win. I mean, I know he's unlucky against Wilder, but if you look at the second win for, for Fury, because it goes Klitschko, then Chisora. That's all right. Okay. And then when you go Fury, Wilder, Wilder it gets even harder. So you say Ortiz, definitely his best win. Tell me the other big win. Well, probably the Stavern win. Well, I'm just saying, that's probably... I know, I know. Was, but that's what I'm saying. Split. So when you look at the top four wins for Joshua, I go Klitschko, Povetkin, White, <coughs> Parker. Huh? And then you say the top four wins for Fury. Klitschko, Chisora... Steve Cunning, Christian Hammer. Who's back on the scene now, by the way? We just thought Ortiz got smashed. But that's the four wins. Now do now do Wilder. Ortiz, Stavern. Twice. Spilka. Spilka. And Molina? The Halfers? Yeah, the Halfers. So it's all really how you ask the question, isn't it? Well, as you proved by your question that you asked. Mm. Mm. Um, how long have we done? I don't know why I went. Um, I'm going to have a run. Garcia, Ryan Garcia, and Martin Ward. Yes, trying to make that fight. Four. I'd like to make it for the AJ card, but I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. So on Golden Boy, it's up to them. Okay. Ryan Garcia says he'd love that fight. But if not, I'm going to make Stephen Smith against Martin Ward. On what on card? On the Dillian White card. Okay. That was a nice burp, mate. Thanks for that. Lovely. Um, what are you doing now? I'm going to have a run. So, I'm going to lose somewhere between oh no, Tuesday. I'm going to lose five, about, about five pounds from now until the show on Saturday. When you see me at the show on Saturday, you, you won't even recognise me. No, because you haven't had a haircut or a shave. I haven't had a haircut and a shave. So can you tell people oh. where to watch the boxing this weekend? Like both shows? Sky Sports, uh, don't miss it. The big one, the white rhino. He... He is in action against Big Daddy Brown, Chisora Gashi, PBK Josh Kelly against Ronowski, Caldina against Townend, British lightweight title, Connor Ben, Nikita Ababu, Shannon Courtney. Don't miss it. And then, where can people watch Amir Khan? Oh, sorry, yeah, you know where to watch Amir Khan. BT, five o'clock in the morning. Don't miss it, Beaver. You want to watch that? Is that right? Yeah, BT. Well, you know, he's your fighter. She doesn't know exactly. what platforms he's going for the win. 
Live on BT and ESPN, obviously. Um, ESPN pay per view. Be interesting. I do like Khan. Listen, I, I never really liked Amir Khan until I got to know. Pop people probably say the same thing about you. Yeah, I think the same thing about a lot of people. Mm. I'll be honest with you, a lot of people come to me and think you're saying you're an absolute prick. But I told him, when you get to know him, he's all right. Who are you talking about? You. Why was it all about me? No, you said, a lot of people say that about you. I said, I think people say that about everyone. I just said, another example is, I get stopped all the time saying, why does that Cassius give you a hard time? He's a complete prick. If I ever seen him, I'd spark him out on the street. And I said, no, he's all right. <laughs> proper Brent, that was. What? Huh? That's proper Brent. No, it's true. Um, okay, next time one of these people, why don't you just phone me? Oh, oh, tell me your oh. location. You took it well, though. No. Send location. T t t t send location. You took it well. And I'm I'll saying. make sure I'm nowhere near you. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying you took it well. I'm a bit of a prick. I told you. Prick. Knob. Yeah. Knob. Yeah, prick's not nice. Knob's all right. A bit of a prick. We've had, we've, we've had that. We've been there. We've been there. We've done it. Um... You've just, just got to stay focused, mate. The only thing that matters is that you carry on breathing. True. That is it. True. It's all you've got to keep doing. Just breathe. You know when you tweeted the eight page, eight page, eight poster picture of mm -hmm. all your shows? It's a little bit alarming, isn't it? Two shows out of that eight over here. When you... Well, not really, because again, it's how you dress it up. So. We've got two shows in the UK in the next eight weeks. That's not horrendous. But hang on a minute. If you take it from April 23 to June 1, yeah. we've done four shows in nine, uh, four shows in 10 weeks yeah. in the UK. So what, what you're failing to realise is now, unfortunately for you, old boy, we are now a global business. So we are doing a lot of shows around the world. So it's not that we're doing less shows in the UK, we're just doing a load of other shows around the world. Yeah. Like how many shows have our competitors in the UK done this year? Yeah, but that doesn't make a difference, does it? Of course it fucking does. No, it doesn't. Of course it Why does, because, because we're doing more shows. Do? No, because what I'm saying is, is we're doing 20 shows a year in the UK, or whatever, 18 shows a year in the UK. And so far this year, uh, we would have done April 20, April 20, April 20, April 20, next year. Six, seven, six, six. So, it's not, but we're just doing a lot of shows worldwide. Will Joshua's five million be priced at 19.99? No, it's going to go up to 29.99. I know we'll you're lying. Right. Straight face, and that will be, yeah, yeah, same price. What cut out? Don't know. Okay, you said it's going to be four in the morning pay per view. Yeah. It's actually going to be more like three in the morning pay per view, that one. But what I'm saying to you is, we will be live from 10 pm from MSG with all the fights, all the Brits in fight. That is a golden night. You get your mates around, you sit up all night, even with your kids. Because I remember as a kid sitting up in the night watching the big heavyweight fights coming in from America, and you'll be doing exactly the same. June the 1st, do not miss it. Do you know what I'm more looking forward to than June what? the 1st? April the 20th. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> what, like, well, this Saturday? Yes. I think we're going to do it's massive a, numbers this Saturday. It's a fun car. You don't yeah, used to yeah, say it's it a is. fun it is. car. It is. Like, I don't know what you're going to get. Like, yeah, I know. You know with Liverpool, I knew like Fitz Fowler, I knew it was going to... But I don't... I, I genuinely... What's happening with that Cheeseman and Fitz Yeah, um, we're just talking about it at the moment. Seeing Fitz, Fitz might come to the show on Saturday. Doyle Gill... Doyle is fighting Wood. No, not Doyle Gill. Gill and Walsh. Walsh. Yeah, Sorry. I don't know. I don't know either on that. But Gill's fighting May 10. So it could be after that. Um, I don't know what you're going to get on Saturday night. I'm not going to overhype it because it's a real fun night with a load of drama. And I just, look, I know with Connor, with Josh Kelly, with Joe Caldean, you've got three of the bright young kids coming through. I'm sure they're all going to be electric in great fights. And then Chisora and Gashi and Allen against Brown, the two big heavyweight fights. I just don't know. 
I think you get a war in Chisora against Gashi. But Dave against Brown, I don't know, one round, 12 rounds, amazing, boring, slow, fast, I, I don't know. Probably not fast, but... Love an O2, right? Well, it's good, O2, great venue. If you haven't got your tickets, get yourself down there. We... We've only done 1,500 so far. What? For that show, it's not gone very well. I know that's a lie as well. Edward, yeah. can you donate two tickets to IFL? Yes. For a competition? Yes. Okay. To sit the next question, to you? No. The question is this. The question is this. So is it the first person that answers this? Or how is this going to work? Because this isn't really work you're doing this. Because then... What is Dave Allen's nan called? Okay. Okay. So how, how does... He always, she's always on his social media. What is Dave Allen's nan called? And the first person to tweet you the correct answer wins two Right, so I'm not going to put any tweets out. The first That's person... It. To tweet tags you. Me, yeah. No, tags me and you. Just to say, Dave Allen's nan is, is called X. And you can't put, he's called nan. Just so I can clarify. Nanny that. Allen. Or Nanny Allen. Yeah, or Grandma, or Ma. Yeah, it's got to be Gramps, an actual name. G. Yeah. What did you call your grandmother? Joan. You called her Joan? That was her name. Yeah, but you didn't call her Nan? Yeah, I did call her Nan. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah you can't... It has to be... Actually, you have to put Veronica. You just have to say it. Oh, fuck. It's not Veronica. No. Ah, no. So, yeah, you have to put her name and you win two tickets for the O2. I will pick it out myself. Ooh. All right, Edward. Thank you. Um, one more thing. Yeah. We need to focus. I'm on it, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. Just a quick word on Kevin Mitchell. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, brother Billy yeah, Mitchell. Yeah, funeral tomorrow. Yeah. Um, just terrible. I mean, four kids, you know. Kevin and Vinny, two brothers, full of personality and character. So sad, been taken so young from us, you know. Gutted for Kevin, gutted for Alice and you know his mum and all the family. Um, they're very proud family people, the Mitchells, you know. And it's so sad. I remember I saw it on social media and I thought, because you never and you just never know, you know. And I phoned up uh, Tony Sims actually, and he told me it was true, and it was devastating. So sad. Um, you know, rest in peace, Vinnie Mitchell, and all our love to the Mitchell family. It's, it's really, really sad. Absolutely sincere condolences to uh, the Mitchell family. Edward, thank you very much to you. Roll on Thursday. Press comments. Is it I, I don't know what we're going to get at the press comments either. Chisora might go nuts. Dave Allen might cuddle Big Daddy Brown. I don't know. That's what I'm saying about this show on Saturday. I just do know not know what you are going to get. Are you signing anyone else? Yeah, there's a few going for it at the moment. UK? US? Both. Any uh, names? What's happening Gassiev? Yeah, Gassiev is going to be on board. Mike Box on the Golovkin card. Not want to find the Usyk card? No. Will you have a show in August? Yep. Where? In America. Probably won't do a UK show in August. No. Okay. Callum Smith against Gilberto Ramirez. Yeah. Unification. I want that for September. Realistic? Yep. On its own? Yep. Liverpool? Or Manchester. Or Manchester. Okay. All right. Hey, Time to work. Thank you very much. Peace See you later. Out.